the year. Uh, I get to come to you guys and, and, and talk about seniors. And um, this year, you know, we, we went through it last year, not knowing really quite what was what was going to be the the scenario with eligibility and return to play and what guys look like in terms of, of having that ability. So, uh, but uh, you know, you're, you talk about two guys in Devonte and Trent um, that. Uh, I've been here since I've been here, and 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 man, it is it is time flies. Um, it's it's hard to imagine that that um, I'll coach a game here next year without them on, in, in, in a uniform, and and to me that's uh, sad, daunting. Um, you know, they they've meant the world to. To, to me, my family, uh, their, their family, um, you know, I've got a ton of respect for both of them. Uh, they've had, uh, in very different ways, unbelievable careers. And, uh, um, you know, I think that, you know, I, I go back to one of the first practices with Devonte. It was the first day of practice. He'd just been cleared from his ACL. He was not in very good shape. Uh, he had a spare tire you know, around him because he hadn't done anything in a year. And uh, it just happened to be one of those practices where we did a little extracurricular running. And, he, you know, he was laying on the floor, uh, throwing up, couldn't run. Uh, and then to realize that that dude was going to be a participant in every game we played and as a freshman. And, you know, I had my mind set up early that I was going to redshirt him because of his knee. He was that good. He was that impactful. <clears throat> and then to see him five years later, uh, most games played. Uh, are you kidding me? I mean, what a what a career! Uh, you know, he's he's the epitome of of what I call blue guys. Uh, his, his numbers won't show up in the stat sheet all the time, but his impact uh, on on games has been like no other. And. Uh, very often, not very often, you find a guy who can play five positions, and and Devontae's been that. So, um, you know, um, what a career, and I'm really proud of him. He's got his degree. He's working on a second. Um, a young man that's that's uh, uh, worked really, really hard on the court and off the court. And and you know, Trent is, uh, gosh. I mean, there's not enough superlatives, adjectives to say about Trent. Uh, he's had an unbelievable career. He's one of the all-time greats to play here. Uh, he is, he is, both he and DeMonte have impacted winning and turning this program around. And, you know, Trent's records speak for themselves. Uh, but, uh, you know, both of those guys have established a culture that uh, I'm really, really proud of. And, you know, from a little kid in South Florida to, you know, looking at the videos and the highlights and when he was a freshman to, you know, seeing him cry on the bench at the Eastern Illinois scrimmage when, you know, he couldn't bring the ball up to court and didn't feel like he could play here to become one of this university's all-time greats is, um, is, is pretty special. It's a tribute to his athleticism, his competitive drive, uh, his winning mentality and attitude. And, uh, you know, just, you know, he's going to be a, He's going to play professionally for a long time, as long as he chooses to. He's that gifted, and uh, you know, he's made the ultimate sacrifice to win it. And, and I hope when people think of Trent Frazier, uh, it's not the records that they think about. It's, it's, it's the winning mentality and, and what he did to uh, help this program turn the corner. And, and uh, those two guys in particular, I'm extremely grateful for and, and, and very proud of. Uh, you know, Jacob will have a decision to make uh, you know, what his future holds. Uh, you know, by the new rule, he has, he has another year of eligibility left. <clears throat> uh, he'll be a game time decision tomorrow on what his status is. Um, you know, fighting a little shoulder issue. Um, but, uh, you know, he's, he's become a guy that I trust so much, I value so much. He, he came here from Holy Cross. He's, you know, an Oakland, California kid. Uh, I loved his feel, his instincts, his motor. 
uh, when we started watching him on film, and, and he's been every bit the uh, the student athlete that we we all love. Uh, you know, a guy that's going to have a master's degree, a guy that's uh, uh, just does his job. You know, the, to quote, you know, Bill Belichick, you know, just do your job. You know, that's that's Jacob Grandison, and whatever he has been asked to do, he does, and uh, uh, he does it. Uh, with the calmness and you know the California cool, as I call it, you know kind of attitude. Uh, but uh, you know a guy that uh, uh, has has had has had a great great career, a great great season, and uh, you know we'll see what that holds. Uh, you know we'll, what holds for him. Uh, the same with Kofi. Uh, you know have decisions to make at the end of the season, uh, and what uh, you know what his best interests are. His records speak for themselves, and you know, we don't have to get into all of those things now. But uh, you know, a group of guys that have been instrumental in changing the face of Illinois basketball, and a group of guys that have sweat equity in a program that they're really proud of, and 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 they're they're. Um, I hope that's not taken lightly. Guys put a lot of work, a lot of time uh, into uh, their craft and, and, and these guys have done that. And so it's been the it's been the tremendous effort um, to flip this thing and, and those guys are big, big pieces to, to flipping that. Question. <clears throat> I guess first is clarifying Mr. Kofi, is he going to go through ceremony? Okay. He will. He will. Um, and then I guess go you know, with Trent and Monte, I mean, when did you maybe know that they were going to be sort of foundational pieces to what you were trying to build? Well, I don't, I don't know if you ever know. I think you, you, you understand that, you know, the, the thing I, in both of their cases, I mean, there was never talk about being a pro. There was never talk about, you know, it was just appreciation for being a great college player and a great student athlete and, and, and achieving, you know, great things. They've always been about winning. There's never been uh, any ulterior motive. Both of them will have opportunities to go play at, at whatever levels that those may be. But it's never been about, you know, I'm coming here and I'm going to be a pro. It's not. And, and so I have great appreciation for that. Um, you know, I think as we started to, to, Trent got off to such a fast start offensively, but I, I think the one thing that when I.O. came, when Andres Feliz came, and, and you saw him develop into a great all-around player, um, probably then with him, uh, you know, and I think Devontae's just always been a guy that I felt very comfortable with that he was going to be a big piece of our, our culture for, for four years or now five. Uh, and, and impact winning. And I guess with Trent, I know when you were at Stephen F. Austin, he was a sophomore, you kind of offered him and recruited him. I guess what was that kind of like seeing him then and kind of then <laughs> being able to get a crack at him later when he got his job? The big advantage. Uh, we knew him. Uh, we had. We had we had done our work at SFA and 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 I had an assistant from Florida and we had gone in and and you know didn't know if he would go at this level because of size and uh, yet all of a sudden he's here and I get the job and uh, so it's you know it's a guy that we had you know some 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 contact with and and uh, man you know I felt great about it and uh, you know I I have no no problem with small guards so. You know, I knew his gift. I knew he could really score. You seem to get a little bit emotional talking about Trent and Demonte. At what point did you kind of realize that those two players were going to be leaving, if that makes sense? Like, obviously, you knew after the season they'd be gone, but at what point did it hit you? Yeah, it probably still has it. It'll hit me tomorrow. Um, you know, I, and it's funny because I'm a really early morning riser, and I was watching our first game again with Iowa this morning and and got done and I started, you know, really haven't paid a, a whole lot of attention to the Coach K stuff and and then started reading a bunch of articles and then it's like, damn, 
I'm losing Trent and Devontae. And, and, you know, some of that stuff starts, you know, gets to you. It, it, it hits home. And it's, uh, I, I'm very emotional. I wear my emotions on my sleeve, as you guys know. And when you get sweat equity with guys and, 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 and you love them and you tell them you love them and you treat them like family, we use that word a lot. Uh, you know, it's not always easy. You know, there's some tough love in there. But, uh, man, to see what they grow into is why, why I do this. It's why it's, it's, you know, you guys think it's wins and losses and marketing and officials. I think it's to develop young guys and, and, and to see them fulfill all their lifetime dreams. And those two guys have done that. Coach, could you go a little bit more in depth on Trent's development as a player? You know, start out as a scorer, then added the defensive piece, and then this year playing point guard? Yeah, I mean, he's always been a scoring point. You know, he's always been the guy with the ball that, that can just go get a bucket any time. And, you know, it's it, and, and we had no other options his freshman year. I mean, he and, he and LeRon had to score. You know, if we were going to get to 50, that, those guys had to score. And, uh, uh, you know, and, and all of a sudden here comes, you know, a few more recruits and, and some help. And, and, and it was always about winning. And, and, and Trent didn't know how to spell defense when he got it. I promise you, he, did, he couldn't spell it and didn't know what it was and, and the concepts, but uh, he, he took to heart the fact that he was always going to be little and he needed to be the hardest playing guy on the court. And for him, that was instinctual. So his um, pride, his wanting to win, uh, is what I respect the most about Trent. Uh, and, and so it became. You know, we get some other guys. I don't have to do it all myself, but I'm gonna I'm gonna impact the game by doing this and and and, and guarding and, and became a uh, a guy who's could run a team and lead because he you know as he grew older he understood every position on the court he understood me he understood what we did and uh, he's just blossomed into one of the great all around players in college basketball and in this university's history. With DeMonte, a lot of people remember the image of him and Connor McCaffrey forehead to forehead. How much his fearlessness, his competitive edge, what you needed when you're trying to climb up in the Big Ten and stand up to people in the league that had been for Illinois for a while? There's a um, street tough. He's got that. And, and he's got that respect. He's got that in our locker room. And, and, and he's got a, uh, you know, a, that Peoria manual, just, you know, something about it. And, and, and he's got it. And, you know, you, you, I always go back, you know, the, one of the most daunting things to me was to think that when we got in the league and it was Michigan, Michigan State, Wisconsin, Purdue, and, and all of them had just long historic cultures and they were so embedded and, and so deep. And, and like, how are we ever going to get there? You know, and how are we gonna to touch that? And for those guys to now be on the other side of that, um, it's that street toughness, it's that grit, it's that fight, it's that competitive stuff, it's the willingness to make your teammates better that Trent's done, it's the sacrifice. Um, you know, and now I hope we're the, I hope we're one of those teams that everybody talks about, you know, how do we catch Illinois? And and those guys are responsible for that. I've heard you reference the Eastern Illinois game before, but in terms of Trent and DeMonte, Specifically, do you remember about that? Yes, being the start of their journey. It was probably a pretty embarrassing night, um, and that's not to take anything away from Jay. And and bef you know, I think the one thing that that man, we had a long way to go. We had a long way to go. I think that night was in full evidence, and that's not to take anything away from Eastern, but 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 you know you truly hit the level that you knew where we were at, you know where where Illinois basketball was at, and to see Trent 
sit on the end of, ben end of the bench and struggle. Um, yeah, that was pretty pretty hard. Is that the first time that it hit you that this is this is? Yeah, I realized I wasn't in SFA in Oklahoma State anymore, and we had a long way to go to build this thing. Uh, I knew it before, but it, but but you know that that's when, when you do it in public, and and, and I'd be remiss, guys, because I've sat here. And, Talked about all those guys, and I've looked out Plummer, and not not with any intent, just being. Um, his his. I don't know how you can have a better year than a, than one year transfers had, and uh, we knew what we were getting when we got him. Uh, we knew we were getting an elite shooter, and the one thing that. <clears throat> We knew it was he would work, and that was the one thing that was very evident in the, in the recruiting process. Um, I would love to have been able to coach him longer uh, than, than the one year, but for him to step in and impact a major college program uh, with that ability, um, it shows his character. He had no idea what he was getting into, truthfully, and learn a new system, learn different things being demanded of you. Um, I would put his year as a transfer down as one of the best in the history of transfers. <coughs> I mean, who's had better? Uh, you know, and uh, you know, he's all-time best shooter that I've coached and uh, been willing to be coached, been willing to, to learn um, and accept every role. And, and uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm extremely proud. He does, he takes great pride you know, he's got, again, he's got his degrees, he's going to have his master's degree, he's a terrific student. Um, everything that you want that to be uh, and hope for, uh, Fonz has been, and he's, he's obviously a huge part of, of this team's success. Coach, can you talk about some of the challenges that Iowa uh, presents to you? You know, specifically slowing down their offense. Obviously, Keegan, Keegan Murray, really good player. Yeah, he's really good. Um, yeah, I, you know, I mean, Iowa's Iowa. They, they, you know, I think they're averaging 80, 80 games in their last five games. Um, I, they're shooting it at a high clip. You've seen a, a dramatic, uh, or I, I say dramatic, you've seen a big change in their role players. Um, you know, everybody talks about Keegan, everybody talks about Bohannon. Um, you know, those two guys are, have, are having great, great seasons. But you've seen Connor McCaffrey go on a tear from the three-point line of late. You've seen uh, his brother Patrick really step up and be impactful. You've seen Chris Murray coming off a 17, 19-point game. Uh, you've seen those guys step up and <clears throat> play off of all the attention that those other two guys those other two guys get, and, and I haven't even mentioned Perkins. They put Perkins in the lineup. Um, he had a great game against us in the first game. So they're going to play the way they play. They do what they do, uh, you know, with the pressing, with the zones, mix it all up. Uh, you know, Fran is, in, in, in my opinion, had a coach of the year type year. You, you lose, you know, the national player of the year, and you just put yourself in a position to have another one. And uh, um, so uh, they've had a great season, and they're and they're and they're playing great, and, and we'll have to play really well tomorrow. Coaches often seem to talk a lot about players afterwards. That I knew this guy would be a coach. Coach K, for example, is done with John Shire. Do you feel like Trent or Demonte has that in their future? Both of them. Both of them. I mean, you, you've got to have a certain mindset to coach. You have a certain feel. If you don't have feel for the game, it gets really hard to um, be a coach. You've got to have instinct, and, and both those guys have that. Um, I think that uh, you know they, they both have enough charisma. Uh, I think they both have what it takes to, to do that, if that's something they choose to do when their time's up. When did those two guys maybe embrace the fact that they were going to be uh, a, a key part uh, of this of this build? I mean, do you remember kind of when that? That's a better question for them. You know, I think they both knew after their freshman year 
that, that you know, that's one of the things we talked about in, in, in that, uh, you know, after those first year meetings, you know, there were a lot of changes. And, uh, you know, it was them being part of the solution. And, and those are the guys that you go to, to you go to battle with. They had incredible freshman years, both of them. And, you know, it was, you know, I still remember Devontae jumping up and making the three to beat Grand Canyon. Uh, you know, and, and all those guys, because of their work and because of their character, I knew right then that those, those are guys we had to build on. And, and then they've done the rest. They've put in the work to, to make themselves better. Do you get a different feel for when Kofi goes through tomorrow than when Iowa went? Because I think we all in this building kind of knew last year that last year was done for us. Was it for Iowa? Yeah, it's 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 same opportunities. I mean, we you know, I wouldn't let Iowa come back. <laughs> I mean, I, we've done everything we could do with 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 that. And, and for for Kofi, it's um, you know, it's information gathering time again and, and, and just see it and. and you don't have a choice to make, but uh, if he does, I want to make sure he's recognized in a way that 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 he should truly be recognized. If that's a ch decision he makes, and, and uh, uh, he's been phenomenal. He's been one of the all-time greats to play here. As a banner will hang, and, and as it should. And um, you know, I think legacy is something that, that that you look at those guys and all of them, and they can feel really, really proud of. Of, of all that, but um, you know, it'll be a, a big, big decision for for Cove at that time. Just a follow up on Iowa coaching, completely different, dramatic, different style of play from your last opponent. Is is that a challenge for you in practice, or is it just doing what you do? No, it's doing what we do, and every, every game, you know, I, every game has got its own identity, and you know, Penn State's. Style of play has been well documented of late. I mean, they've, they've played, you know, they played everybody in this league tougher than heck and had opportunities to win really a lot of games. And they did that without Lee. You know, Lee's, Lee's only played 10 games this year. And him coming back actually helps that team. They're, they're going to be a team that will be, be a pain in the neck in Indianapolis. Uh, but, um, you know, now you get just the opposite and you, you've got to prepare and, and uh, you know, that's what these guys do is game to game make the make the changes they need to. With guys that come in, transfers with the one year, I mean, just before you make that move, just how how much do you maybe struggle with the you know, decision if this is if it's the right guy? Or just what yeah, it's a lot of information. It's a lot more than you guys think because it's it's you know a lot. I I, I say this a lot of times. The, the transfer portal is speed dating. And it's it's what it is. It's you know a lot of times you know we we, we sign him and he didn't visit campus. Uh, you know it's it's just a um, it's gathering as much information, finding out as much about their character as you can possibly find out what they stand for, um, and and then you you make a decision based on that information. So uh, everything we found out about Plum, we you know the the basketball stuff was easy. You know then it's about finding out about their character and. You know, what type of student they are, all those things play into to those ch those choices. A lot of the conversations about Iowa and how they've developed and changed. You didn't have Bella the first time around. You get a lot of coaching on the sideline about breaking the press specifically. How much different is it going to be for you against them with him available? Well, he he's very good at that. Uh, there's no doubt about that. I mean, you know, he helps that dynamic, his speed, um, you know, his his, his passing. Um, you know, he's a guy that can that, that excels at a very high rate in the open court. I mean, that's where he's actually at his best. Uh, so that'll be something that uh, you know we'll be excited to have in the, in the, in the lineup uh, tomorrow that we didn't have the first time. I know you're not on social media a ton. It's something that's kind of <laughs> pop. If somebody's if somebody's putting it out there, it's somebody doing it for me. Well, when you're tweeting about Joey, you are. Um, <laughs> So there's been conversation about um, Trent's jersey going up in the rafters. Is that something that you guys have talked about, or what are your thoughts on that? Um, you know, internally, yes, but uh, again, that's something that uh, you know we'll probably after the season have those discussions about 
Is he worthy? Absolutely. Absolutely. I know that there are certain standards, but um, gosh darn, he is every bit as worthy as every name that's up there and, and in terms of belonging up there. And uh, I'm talking about a, a guy that's, again, just look at the record book. His, his name's going to be dotted all over that thing for the rest of his, his, his career. And uh, last three years have been a lot of wins. You mentioned the information gathering process with Kofi. Do you think the year that he's having has changed the information at all? I know it's, you wouldn't think that in most cases a two time All American could come back, but he is a unique case. Not for me to determine. And, I, and I'll be honest, I don't get into a lot of in depth conversations with those people this time of year, so and I haven't had a lot. That'll be, again, those are for the, the other 30 people to, to run those organizations to make that decision. Anything else?